to a very special edition of Coffee with Lynette with my very good friend Mario Aneco on the other side of the pond because there's a lot of things happening in England as well. For the last six years, he's been informing and educating worldwide audience on YouTube and other platforms about our monetary system, the financial markets and precious metals. Ludwig von Mises once said, you get into the inflationary route, eventually people will realize that you won't be able to stop inflating and then they will want to get rid of the currency. And the reality is, I think we've just seen that we are very, very near that. At this stage, it may be difficult to tell you exactly the moment, but quite honestly, it can happen overnight as we saw with SBB Bank. 48 hours, two days, gone. Mario, thank you so much for joining us today. So Mario, thank you so much for joining us today. There is so much to talk to you about. Yes, you're welcome. And uh, thanks for having me. Yes, <laughs> uh, we scheduled this probably a couple of months ago and uh, we picked a really good uh, day. We sure did. But I'm thinking that the dominoes are starting to fall. You know, if we go back just to last September, because these things don't happen in a one off, it's more like a chain reaction. And last September, you had the Bank of England jump into the market to buy gilts. Do you want to, um, you want to talk about that? Yeah, I um, noticed since uh, the beginning of 2022 that bond yields and interest rates uh, were rising mm -hmm. quite a bit. And uh, 10 year yield uh, in the, the UK, the gilt yield was below 1% in 2021. And then all of a sudden <laughs> going up and uh, uh, two, three, you know, four and uh, a month before everything kicked off in this uh, LD, LDI, uh, liquidity driven investments, which were used by uh, defined benefit pension uh, mm -hmm. companies. I, I was warning that something was going to happen because even though yields were relatively low, three or 4%, the fact that they went from below one so quickly uh, to four. I thought was going to cause an accident for the UK gilt market and for the, yeah, for the, for, for the pound as well. We saw the pound drop to 103 versus the dollar. And then to top it all off, it was a time when government was changing here. They had like set up this huge fund to basically bail out every consumer from higher energy uh, prices. They guarantee the cap for utility bills. And then you had this mini budget by uh, Quasi Quartang under uh, Liz Truss's 40, 40 odd day uh, government or premiership. And it really uh, snowballed the, the crisis. Uh, gilt yields went through the roof. I think they went up above 5% in the longer end. And everything unraveled, and the Bank of England had to uh, step in to do not QE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like this is not a bailout. So yeah, <laughs> not QE. But can you draw a line from what happened then? Because because when interest rates go up, I always use my little chopstick. When interest rates go up, the market value of the corresponding debt, so bonds, go down. So you know, did all of the actions that the Bank of England did, did that fix the problem? Is the problem fixed or is it just more hidden? I don't think it's fixed because the Bank of England doesn't have any, well, we don't have that much gold in the UK anymore, even though the Bank of England right. holds gold for other uh, central banks. No, it was just created out of thin air, this uh, bank, uh, central bank money and they uh, and the markets and investors still f have faith and confidence in the Bank of England, even though up until recently, uh, gilt yields are starting to go back up. But now they've come, come off a bit with what's happened uh, in the US with the intervention, the backstop and not bailout. Even gilt yields dropped yesterday. But I, I noticed today that uh, treasury yields are back up and so are gilt yields. So it's really volatile. 
I, I tweeted out uh, about half an hour ago that um, the volatility in treasury markets uh, remind me of the Italian government bond. I used to trade the BTP future uh, before Italy joined the euro when we had the Italian lira. And it was, uh, it was a wild market to trade because it was so volatile. And, and uh, that just goes to show how... Um, the credibility of these uh, markets, these government securities, in my opinion, have uh, gone, gone out the window, especially now that the central banks are supposed to be selling them from their balance sheets. Who's going to buy them? Well, right. And can they even do that? Can they sell them into this market right now? No, because they've just like, bring us whatever you have. It doesn't matter what the current market value is. We'll loan you the money at par. But can you draw a line from what happened last September to, you know, all of these other dominoes that are starting to fall? Yeah, I, I think it's just like, a, I mean, I've never fought in a war. I've watched all the movies. It's like a battlefield with mines. The first yes. mine that first mine that went off was here in the UK. Second, I guess you could say Japan, there's been a, a mine right. went off there in, in December. And now in the US, uh, this huge uh, banking, um, banking trouble is uh, another mine that's gone off. And uh, it, it seems to be every three months, right? Uh, September, uh, September uh, end of September, beginning of October, then December, Japan, March, the US. So what's going to happen in June? I don't know. Uh, something will come out of, uh, you know, left field. Right. Well, it seems to be these unintended consequences. But can do you think, knowing what we know now, can these central banks continue to raise rates to, quote unquote, fight the inflation that they themselves actually, I mean, this whole circumstance, I haven't heard really one central banker really step up and say, well, yeah, we forced everybody into these zero interest rate policy, negative rates. That means that they're buying bonds and these securities at the highest possible levels. And now we're raising rates. And, and even the central banks are losing money, which doesn't really matter, right? Doesn't really matter because they can just print more of it. Does it matter? No, not for them. I guess they're uh, <laughs> they're not like normal uh, private companies. They they'll just uh, sit on the losses. The Fed, I think, is sitting on, on over a trillion dollars of losses, and they've got the very similar balance sheet to Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, but yes. um, yeah, um, what can they do? I mean, it's. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they, the Fed can continue to do a quantitative tightening or I unwind their balance sheet because this new program program they have is basically QE because they're, they're, they're saying we're going to buy any securities that you need to sell to us. Even if they're worth 80 cents to the dollar, we're going to pay a hundred. Right. Uh, that's a, my, by doing QT, it, it makes no sense to do BTFP.